Hello, I'm Frank Ang, staff writer with the Blood Horse, and I'm joined by Ellis Starr, the national racing analyst for Equibase. And welcome to That Handicapping Show. We're going to look at a pair of races at Belmont Park on June 28th, the Mother Goose Stakes, which marks the return of Untappable, and the New York Stakes, a nice field of turf horses uh, testing their mettle at Belmont. Uh, Ellis, what did you think of the uh, Mother Goose? Is it as simple as Untappable? Is it a one horse? field in his uh, three-year-old filly race? Well, you know the saying, Frank, says sometimes the rest are running for second, and I think that's true here. Uh, this is also our echo base race of the week, so I looked at it in detail, trying to come up with something, because I am known kind of a, as a contrarian. But in this case, uh, it's really tough. She's got what's called a triple advantage, and a triple advantage is pretty unheard of in the racing world. It has to do with speed figures, as you probably know, whether you're referring to buyers or echo base figures, which of course I use. Um, it's and a triple advantage is a horse whose last three figures, the lowest of the three are higher than any horse's other figure. And she's just so far superior. Uh, when she won the Rachel Alexandra, she got a 108 echo base figure. Then she won 13 in the Fairgrounds Oaks and a 114 in the Kentucky Oaks. And she's won by an average of seven lengths, as we all know, in those three races. So she's really tough. The only issue in the race potentially is Princess Violet, who I would give a slight upset chance to. She's lightly raced, run three times, all at six furlongs, but her last one did come at Belmont, and she's likely to have the lead. I can't see another pace in the race, Frank. And mm -hmm. so, you know, if she gets out on a really easy lead, this filly who really improved, she went from an 86 to a 99 figure, that's a 13 point jump. So another 13 point jump puts her at 112. It's possible that even Untappable can't run her down, even though I doubt it. So I'd make the race Untappable probably as top pick. Of course, no value in the race. Uh, if you're going to play an exacta, Princess Violet for second. And Stop Charging Maria would be the other horse that deserves a look to run second in the exacta based on her Black Eyed Susan win. And the fact that I like, after two bad races to start a campaign, Castellano got back on for the Black Eyed Susan, and Javier had been up for both her wins last year, the Tempted and the Demoiselle, um, and got back on. So he's really been up for three of her big wins. Yeah, I mean, you can never go too wrong as a handicapper of just tossing every favorite. But in this field, I can't get past Untappable. We also love the sport. And to me, she just looks like a filly that's on another level right now. The layoff might be a concern sometimes, but Steve Asmussen has said more than once that this filly likes a little rest in between her races. Her works at Churchill have been eye-catching, have been just what you wanted. She looks right on schedule to pick up right where she left off. Underneath, a horse that does intrigue me is America. Granted, this filly's finished behind some of the other horses in here uh, in recent races, but I really like the second half of her race at Pimlico. It was kind of a slow early race where she closed well. Um, also had some trouble early, but really came on strong at the end. And since then has had a string of nice works at Saratoga. I think Bill Mott might have had turned a corner with this filly. I look for her to hit the board. The other race that we thought we'd look at, which might be a bit more competitive in terms of we might not be so locked into the favorite, is the New York Stakes, uh, also on the card at Belmont Saturday. Ellis, where were you leaning in this race? Well, this is a great race. Even with six horses, I tossed out three. Viva Raffaella, Scampering, Gathering, and I'm left with three. And they're very evenly matched. Tannery, Riposte, and Inimitable Romani. And Romani is kind of a favorite of mine because she's got those two big upsets, three upsets in the last four races all double digits. I don't think she'll be double digit odds today in the six horse field. But even though she, her wins came in grade three and she's stepping up to grade two, the fact that she won the Long Island at a mile and a half last fall at Aqueduct and recently won the Bewitch off the pace at Keeneland says to me she's pretty tractable. Her figures are all in the same line here. Not, I, when I handicap her race like this, Frank, I use figures and I also look at last fractions. And she can get the last fraction just fine. Um, she's won at Belmont. She's won at a mile and three eighths and a mile and a half. So I don't think a mile and a quarter is going to be a problem. So I've got to give her a slight preference. Uh, Tannery came back in a really easy kind of a gimme race. The uh, Miss Liberty Stakes at Monmouth off a layoff from November to May. But her best is good enough. She's a grade one winner. And Riposte finally showed her stuff in her fourth U.S. start winning the Sheepshead Bay. I'm going to go with an Emil Romani on top, but I'm going to use all three in Emil Romani, Riposte, and Tannery uh, as my contenders if I play pick threes. I like uh, an Imitable, Inimitable Romani and Tannery as well, but neither one of those is my top pick. I went with Scampering in this race. 
Uh, it could be the rare situation where you actually get a price on Shug McGee in New York. Um, but this this horse has been, this mayor has been knocking on the door. This has just kind of been, been close throughout her career. Um, I just think last time she ran against a fairly major bias on the turf at Belmont. Uh, so maybe she didn't get her best effort there. So I'm giving her a little more credit for that one. If, I, if you do that, that kind of puts her right there with some other horses, and she figures to be a bit longer price. So I'm going to land there. In the middle, Rom Romney has had a terrific year. I'm hoping, thinking, wanna, somewhere in the middle there that maybe this race might be a little bit too short. I think she's at her best when it's a longer race, the mile and a half range. And Tannery is another horse that uh, definitely can win and has been right there this year as well. But I'm going to take a bit of a shot with Scampering. Well, you certainly can't go wrong getting John Velasquez and Shug at a decent price, which you're going to get here because the other three are going to be the three bidding choices. So um, it's pretty good when a top trainer like McGahey puts a horse up from uh, allowance. He's still eligible for third level allowance to the stakes level. Scary spill yesterday at Belmont, but John Velasquez apparently dodged serious injury. I'm picking him to win both of these stakes races, so I'm sure he's glad to hear that for what it's worth. Anyway, thanks for joining us on this week's That Handicapping Show. Thanks to Brisnet for the past performances, and get some winners this Saturday. Good luck.